It's a beautiful morning in Kerbal Space Program 2, and today we're building a starship to fly the Dear Moon mission. Or is it the Dear Mun mission? Anyway, if you just want to download my starship instead of building it, you can follow the link in the description and skip to this time to watch it launch. We'll start building Super Heavy. First start with the largest XL tank and the half size one under it. Then put a vector engine in the center and eight around the outside. Make sure to set the gimbal limit to 50% on the outside ones and the center one just to make it a bit more controllable otherwise it's way too twitchy. Next we're going to add some separatrons just to give us a nice clean first second stage separation. Put six of them around the bottom edge, make sure to turn them around so that they're firing upwards. And that's pretty much it, that's your super heavy booster done and dusted. Make sure to save it and we'll move on to the starship. Start with a half size XL tank and put an XL engine mount underneath it. And then select your vector engines and put three of them at the bottom. As you can see the new blueprint mode comes in very handy for lining this up. While we're here we're also going to place three spotlights just to help us in case we happen to be landing in the dark. Next take three of these cargo bay rings and stack them on top of each other and then put the nose cone on top of that. You'll notice that the nose cone opens correctly but the ring sections open up individually. So to fix that we're going to use a custom action group and we're going to do one for the nose cone and one to open all three ring sections together. Open up the nose cone and place one of the large adapter fuel tanks and one of the six ton monopropellant tanks inside. This helps to balance out the weight in the nose. Once that's done we're going to put our probe controller on top and then the 1k battery on top of that and finally a docking port on top of that. Speaking of docking, while we're here we're gonna place a spotlight on top just to help us light up our target when we're docking. We also want to make sure we have control of the craft wherever we are so we're gonna place this communications antenna right over there. Then we're going to place two of these baguette fuel tanks on the sides just to help with the weight balance. Now we're going to move on to the RCS system. Take two of these thrusters and place them on the sides. Then right click them and go to the advanced settings and turn off your control. This helps save fuel because that's not a good thruster for yawing anyway. Now place another set just above that with the nozzles just touching and then shift it down so it looks like just one thruster and remember to turn off your control for it as well. Now repeat the process for the front and back set. Try to line it up nicely and make sure to double it up and this time make sure to turn off pitch control for both of them. When you're done with that you can go ahead and repeat the same process on top. The reason we double them up is because they're quite weak and the starship can be very heavy especially if it's fully fueled. Unfortunately you can't use the much more powerful vernier thrusters because there's some type of bug where the pitch control doesn't work properly and it's constantly fighting itself going back and forth and wasting a whole bunch of fuel so please just trust me after hours of pulling my hair out just use these ones and double them up. Much easier. And speaking of vernier thrusters you can place three of them at the bottom just to give us a bit more power and control for our docking. Just make sure to turn off everything except for fore and aft control for them. And then you can do the same on top. Just put three vernier thrusters just to help us slow down when we're approaching our target. Again remember to turn off everything except for fore and aft control. And now it's time for some landing legs. Unfortunately there's another bug. You need to place them on radial decouplers if you're using these legs otherwise your first stage will actually drain fuel from your second stage. So I used six, just put them as low as you can. Now right click on the engine mount and drag this length parameter down to about 1.7 meters. This is what's gonna give us that skirt that goes around the engines. All we need to do is place an XL decoupler underneath. Make sure to put it in the right spot. 
And there we go, we have our skirt. Uh, another very important thing is right click on the engine mount and set this deploy type from shroud to none. That makes sure that the skirt actually stays on and doesn't drop with the decoupler because that would be very embarrassing. Now we can go ahead and put our landing legs in place. You can extend them and then shift down the decouplers until it looks about right. Blueprint mode is very helpful again. That looks good I think. Go ahead and stow the legs and remember your solar panels. I used these ones. You can put it about there and yeah, they look pretty good. All that's left to do is the flaps. They're quite tricky, so I'm gonna load my actual craft and show you how I did them. So you use the smallest control surface and make sure you're on symmetry mode and you don't place them on the sides like this. You place them one click back. These are the settings that I used for the bottom flaps. Now you just need to shift them down. Shift them down just to the edge of the skirt and your bottom flaps are done. Now moving on to the top flaps. These are the settings. Now you'll notice that it won't let you place the flaps on the doors or on the nose cone. So you need to place it on the side like this and then shift and rotate it to line up with the flaps on the bottom. Once you've done that, you can shift the flaps up just above the RCS and then rotate and move them in slightly just to get it to sit flush. It takes a little bit of fiddling around, but just spend a little bit of time on it and you'll get it to fit nicely. Since we can't flap the flaps the way we need to in KSP, we need to right click and set the authority limited to 0% on both the top and bottom ones, otherwise we won't be able to control the craft properly. Now all that's left to do is load our Super Heavy and then load and merge in our Starship. Once it's in, we just place it on top. You might notice your Delta V is wrong. Just set the Starship as your launch assembly and that'll fix that. Now you can sort out your staging order. Make sure to put the radial decouplers right on top so you don't blow off your landing legs. Very important, right click on the engine mount and make sure that the shroud deploy type is set to none. Unfortunately, it forgets this every single time you load it. Finally, place eight struts like this from the first to second stage to keep it stable. And that's it, your Starship and Super Heavy are ready to fly. So as you might have noticed, the thrust to weight ratio is not that great, but once it gets going, it really gets going. It's looking very good, very shiny, very smooth, could be pointier, but oh well. Now I'm just going to slow it down to normal speed so you can see that awesome stage separation. Ah, wasn't that beautiful. Back up to full throttle, we're nearly in orbit at this point. Now we just coast up to our apoapsis to circularize. Now we're officially in orbit, we can open up our solar panels. I can imagine they'd be working quite well with how shiny the Starship is. And now we plan our ejection burn. Uh, it's a bit tricky in KSP2 because you can't see your trajectory inside the sphere of influence, but you can see I do something clever with the camera here, so I can see it on the main trajectory, which helps a lot, and that lets me get it pretty damn good. Now we time warp to our maneuver node, which is a very handy feature, although overall the maneuver timer is a bit awkward and you can see you just kind of need to count it down and shut down at the right time, try and get the time right. And then afterwards I check how wrong it is and I open up the nose cone and make some small adjustments to get it absolutely perfectly on about 55 kilometers periapsis at the MUN. Now that we're officially on the way, we can open up the cargo doors and you can see our passengers there. And we're letting them have one hell of an amazing view. 
as we time warp away from Kerbin. And they can look back and see how far they're going. And then they can watch themselves slowly approach the Mun as well. Now it's time to plan our capture burn. I spent way too long on that, getting it absolutely perfect. And then I started time warping and I realized, hold on a second, I need to actually <laughs> orientate myself. And then I time warped to the burn. Right before the burn, I just made sure everything was closed and locked and all the tray tables were in the upright position. And then I did the burn. And that's it. We have officially entered Muna orbit, or is Mana orbit. Now I just time warped a bit to get into the daylight and I opened up the bay doors because Jeb is our VIP passenger and he's allowed to go for an EVA. So I decided let's let him out. Oh no. Something went terribly wrong. All our passengers have been flung away. The starship is in several pieces and Jeb is hanging on for dear life over there. Just look at him. He does not look happy. He knows something has just gone very horribly wrong and he's stuck over there. So after that horrible glitch in the matrix, our only choice is to load the last saved game. And unfortunately that turns out to be quite a while away. Fortunately, however, thanks to the magic of video editing, you don't need to see all that work I had to do just to get back to the same spot. And just like that, it's as if nothing ever happened. And not only that, but I actually took the time to give our Kerbinauts an amazing view of the Kerbin rise over the Mun. Look at that. And now we're ready to give it another try. So we turn on the lights and we ask Jeb to climb out. Looks like everything's okay this time. He looks a little bit hesitant. I guess you can't blame him after what just happened. Come on, little guy. You can do it. There he is. Oh. He looks like he's got some type of magnetic boots on. And he needs to be very dramatic, of course. It is Jeb, after all, so he does a little jump here. And off he goes flying off into space. He looks a bit concerned, perhaps he's having flashbacks of a nightmare he had of a very similar situation, but there, there is the smile. He's in control now, he's got his backpack on, so he's all smiles from here. That's a face of awe. He can't believe what he's getting to experience here, with Kerbin in the background over there. He's having the time of his life. But all good things must come to an end, and in this case, sooner rather than later, before something else can go horribly wrong. So Jeb is on his way back to the starship, using years of experience to fly himself over. Now he activates his magnetic boots. There we go. And has a casual little stroll, takes a last look before he goes. Grabs onto the hatch, and then it's time to go back inside, to safety. Now at this point I wanted to give the other tourists a nice view as well. So I lowered the periapsis to about 35 kilometers to give them a very nice view. And definitely not because I was worried that too much weight would make re-entry uh, difficult. So it definitely wasn't burning off fuel. But then I closed everything up raised up to circularize the orbit and now it was time to plan our escape burn to get back to Kerbin. I set the periapsis to about 25 kilometers. It was at this point that I noticed quite embarrassingly that we had lost our skirt, uh, obviously during the loading after that horrible accident. So no matter, here we go. So once again, I just used the vernier thrusters to make some small corrections to get the periapsis just right. At this point, I had to make sure that our tourists had a good view. So I opened up the cargo doors and spun the starship around, giving them a good view of the Mun and of course, Kerbin as it came over the horizon. 
and then we could time warp away safely and they can slowly watch as they approach Kerbin. This game really is beautiful. Now we're less than 15 minutes away. We're going to close everything up, fold up the solar panels and orientate ourselves for re-entry. And here we go. You can see we're coming down over a section where there's some land and water, but with just our luck, we'll be landing where the water is. Quite clearly now, we can see our skirt is missing. Very embarrassing. But here now, you just need to orientate yourself uh, radial out. You'll notice uh, the whole time I'm thrusting to your to the left. For some reason, it keeps pulling to the right. I'm not sure why, but it's manageable. You just need to stay on top of it. And we're slowing down quite nicely. Quite stable. It's going very well. Constantly yawing to the left just to compensate as it pulls to the right. And it looks like we're landing right in this section of water. Now right around the 10 kilometer mark, our Starship is very clever. It automatically forms a flip maneuver to point engines down. No input required. Unfortunately, this does mean we're coming down a little bit faster than we would otherwise, but we've got plenty of fuel. Start up the engines, slowing down quite nicely. We're actually coming down perfectly. I even throttle down because we're getting close. Watch the altitude now. Everything's going perfectly until all of a sudden it jumps to show the ground level uh, making me think I'm much higher than I actually am so I throttle down even more to speed up to not waste fuel uh, until too late I notice that's wrong and I throttle up and we hit the water at quite a speed but we're okay we have lost our engines but we don't need them anymore anyway and our starship starts to break dance to celebrate a very successful dear Mun mission if you enjoyed this and you want to see Starship land on the Mun and go to Duna next, make sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss that. And I'll see you in the next video.